Welcome to ETF.com Live, the video edition. My name is Dave Nottig. I'm managing director here at ETF.com. And got asked a not specific ETF question today, but one I think is still really interesting, which is how is it possible that all around the world we have negative interest rates on bonds? I think in particular, people look at the German Bund and see the negative about 40 basis point rate there showing up on their screen and it doesn't make any sense. Well, to understand how you can even end up with negative rates, you have to understand a little bit about how bonds are priced. So in the case of say the German Bund, there, the German government is putting out bonds on a regular basis to fund their government, just like the United States does. So take a notional amount. Say you want to put $10,000 into a government bond. Well, they're going to promise you something in return. And in, in recent times, that return has been nothing. So the, the actual auction of recent German bonds were 10-year notes that had 0% coupon, meaning you gave them $10,000 and in 10 years, they promised to give you the $10,000 back. Okay, so that's zero and that already may seem like a bad deal. How does that end up negative? Well, these all trade in auctions. So for the promise of getting $10,000 back, or in this case, 10,000 euros back in 10 years, there's an open market to bid on that right to get that promise from the German government. And in this case, in recent auctions, people have been willing to spend more than the $10,000 they're going to get back. How much more? Well, enough to give you this implied return of about negative 40 basis points a year. So the way that actually gets put on the screen is the bond that you would get back $100 on later, you're paying $104, 104 euros for right now. That gives you that implied negative rate. So now why in the world would anybody intentionally buy this security, even at zero, much less with this implied negative return? Well, it has to do with the fact that there are not a lot of places to park large amounts of cash. Imagine that you're, say, a European pension fund, and you have hundreds of millions, maybe billions and billions of euro that have to go somewhere. You can't literally leave that, say, in your Deutsche Bank account without taking on some significant counterparty risk, right? They're not going to insure at a government level billions and billions of dollars of what are effectively just deposits at that point. You're used to seeing sort of FDIC insured up to $100,000, for instance, on your bank account. If you want to put more than that to work, you've got to find somewhere to put it. And if you're trading in euro and you're looking for the safest security you can own, chances are that's going to be a government bond issued by Germany. And in fact, if that pension fund has a specific policy, it probably says you must own bonds issued by the central bank or by Germany itself. And that means you have no choice. If you want to put cash to work, you effectively have to be a buyer of that security. That means that you're going to end up bidding it up to a point when it is no longer economically sensible to own it. Why wouldn't they, for instance, just own, say, U.S. bonds, which at least are paying a couple of percent on the 10 year right now for a while? Well, you have to then go through a currency hedging transaction. And lo and behold, when you start going through all the math of those currency transactions and hedging out the currency risk over that 10 year period, it ends up not actually making any sense. So you get stuck owning these negative interest rate bonds, whether that's from Germany or other countries that are issuing them. So not something we've had to worry too much about here in the US, although certainly now that we're in a rate cutting cycle, we're headed towards rates that are, if not negative, pretty unattractive. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. I hope this has at least cleared a little mud out of the water when it comes to looking at zero and negative interest rate policies around the world. Thanks for listening. See you next time.